In this latest installment of carburetors versus fuel injection, we ran a 1995 LT1 and ran a dual plane carbureted intake and Edelbrock VRS carburetor and directly compared that to the factory short runner EFI intake. Which one makes more power? Come on guys, dual plane with a carburetor or fuel injection? It's time to choose who you got. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. I am at West Tech Performance and today it's all about carbs versus computers. We're taking a look at an other guy's small block, a 19, early to mid 90s, LT1 350, the reverse cooling Gen 2 LT1. We're going to compare the factory short runner LT1 intake manifold to kind of your run of the mill dual plane carbureted intake. So, which one makes more power, carbs or fuel injection? Let's take a look. Hey guys, if you're new, welcome to the channel. But what happens if you have a question? Hey, I saw this video, but I wanted to ask Richard a question. Well, you're in luck. You get to do that. Join us nightly, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on the live feed. You can come on, join the group. If I don't have an answer to your question, chances are there are lots of bright guys. They might have an answer. So if you've got a question about any of the video that you just saw, or maybe you're working on a project, join us live, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, on this channel. So in order to run our distributor, we're going to have to pull that out. That's the drive for the oil pump. And then put our carbureted intake manifold on. And then we can slide in the distributor. It all looks clean in there. That thing looks like fresh and new, man. Pretty fancy, huh? First up is the carb intake. Drop on the carb. Hook up the fuel lines. Running two lines allows us to monitor fuel flow to the primary and secondary circuit of the carburetor. This allows us to determine how much fuel flow we have to the front four cylinders versus the back four cylinders. Even fuel flow means even power production. Time to pop in the distributor. After running the carburetor combination, it was time to install the factory LT1 intake. The nice thing about the LT1 intake is you don't have to worry about water leaks. After bolting the intake down, it was time to install the fuel rail, injectors, and harness. For this test, we installed 80 pound injectors, although that's way more than we needed, but that just means later on, 
we get to add boost. The final step was to install the throttle body. Okay guys, let's take a look at the dyno results of the LT1 and we ran this in stock trim. We're gonna compare the carbureted induction system which consisted of a GM performance four barrel carbureted uh, unit for the LT1 and then an Edelbrock VRS uh, 750 carburetor. And we compared that to the factory LT1 intake manifold and the factory throttle body, obviously run with fuel injection and the other one run with carburation. We ran it with a Holly HP management system. And otherwise, the motor was, it had the stock intake, stock throttle body. The one provision that we did do is I drilled the hole in the back of the throttle body so that we could run a distributor, <laughs> just so that I could run our Holly EFI with it. Later on, we may try to do a test and hook up the OptiSpark and stuff. But all we were doing is trying to make sure that we had the right air fuel by controlling the injectors and the right timing by controlling the distributor. And all of that worked out fine. There's really no other power to be had from having, you know, uh, individual coil plugs and that kind of stuff. Really more of that stuff is for ignition or very, very high RPM stuff or very, very high boost where you start being concerned about coil power and rise time and that kind of stuff. But for this application for a stock motor, not a problem. We did run it with long tube headers and I was force feeding water through this so we were not driving the water pump. But otherwise, it's it's this is the combination and we've run these before in the past. So run in this condition first with the factory LT1 intake manifold and we had uh, I think this one had 80 pound injectors on it we were controlling with a Holly and there's no reason to run 80 pound injectors we could have run stock ones but we didn't have the stock ones on this manifold we just had some that were laying around but as long as we can control them and we have the right air fuel in this case we ran it at like 12.8 that seemed to work good um, we played with timing like we normally do we keep adding timing until this thing stops making power and because we didn't TDC this thing um, it was showing it was giving us an indicated 38 degrees, but that might have not have been exactly right. It could have been 34, 35, 36. But for us, that didn't really matter. Like I said, at that point, it stopped adding power if we continued to add more timing. So we know that that's as much timing as it would run. So run in this manner when we ran the stock LT1 intake manifold. It made 321 or 22 horsepower. Torque was higher than that, 353 foot-pounds of torque. So it did good for, for a stock cam, stock head, stock, you know, stock block and stock short block, I should say. Here's what happened, though, when we ran the same combination with a carbureted intake manifold. You can see it made a little bit more peak power. Not, not a bunch in terms of peak power, but 334 horsepower. So peak peak power was up, but peak torque was up a lot. This thing made over 400 foot pounds with the carburetor. And in fact, in looking at this, I, it wasn't until after we had come off of the dyno and had everything back and I was actually back at my house and started, started reviewing this stuff that I thought that looks like way too big of a difference down in the torque area. Cause we're talking about like a hundred foot pounds of torque down at 3,500 RPM, 3,600 RPM. And I honestly don't think that there's that much of a difference between a carbureted intake manifold and the factory intake manifold, despite the fact that the factory into intake uh, LT1 intake manifold is a very short runner intake manifold and that's what short runner intake manifolds do we know from previously comparing I ran the same comparison on the L99 and we were 40 or 50 foot pounds difference uh, on that combination and so we know that there's going to be a big difference this just seems like a lot so what I'm probably going to do is the next time we rerun this we'll probably redo this test and I just, you know, for my own <laughs> verification, I just want to make sure that this is indeed the, the, the change in power. And then we're going to do a lot more testing with this LT1. We got cams and heads and all kinds of things coming up. And eventually, obviously, we'll run boost. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff.
I'll keep testing.